Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today is Sunday, so you're gonna get another soap making tutorial. And today I'm going to be doing a peacock swirl, um, kind of a modified version of it. And I'm not really sure what that's called. I think I've heard it called Florida Lee somewhere. Um, but I'm just gonna call it a modified peacock because that's basically what it is. So anyway, um, you know the drill and as always, safety first. All right, let's get this party started. Okay, now while I wait for my oils to cool, um, <clears throat> I have already dispersed my colors and uh, I'll go ahead and show you what um, what I have going on here. So the one of the, the main color that I'm gonna do is this uh, antique silver mica color from Brambleberry. I really love how this, it's got kind of like a purplish, very subtle, very subtle, uh, just a warm kind of color to it. Um, and I dispersed that one in oil here. I'm also using this aqua pearl mica from Brambleberry as well. And uh, this one is a little, not quite as sparkly, but it's a very pretty aqua color. And I also dispersed this one in oil. Um, and then I'm also using titanium dioxide, which, oh shoot, um, which I dispersed in water. So that's like, that's the main difference between these. So this is a very, um, this is a, water dispersible pigment here. I <laughs> just made a mess. Um, anyway, so um, the, the fragrance that I'm gonna be using is, um, and it's been a while since I've used it, but it's this, uh, it's called God's Love, and I don't have it in the original bottle because it came in a plastic bottle, and I don't like fragrances to sit around in plastic, so I put it in this glass bottle that I saved from a previous fragrance oil and just, uh, wrote on it here but it's called God's Love and it's from um, uh, Nature's Garden I believe is where it's from yes so uh, Nature's Garden um, has like a an array of really nice fragrances and that one is a really difficult one to, to describe it's like um, I, I don't even know if I could go about describing it it's so different and unique and it's got kind of like a classic warm like comfort smell to it so uh, Maybe I'll come up with a better way to describe it, but uh, yeah, so that's the fragrance I'm going to use. And like the last time I checked, I don't, um, I don't remember it accelerating or rising or doing anything crazy on me. It does discolor a little bit, but that's okay. Um, my base color is going to be this uh, antique silver, so any kind of discoloration that's going to happen is going to be covered up by this antique silver. And what I'm going to do is, um, even though I'm doing a modified peacock, uh, the base of the soap is going to be a mixture of these two in the teardrop, like, uh, like the hip hop drop soap. Um, but it's going to be a subtle drop this time instead of such a big one, like the hip hop drop. And then I'm going to do the modified peacock on top with, um, the, the turquoise and the white and, um, I mean, yeah, it's gonna have to have the antique silver also, but then I'm also gonna put um, like a, a copper mica color in there that's only gonna be dispersed in oil. So you'll see, um, you'll see that when it when it comes up. Okay, so now my oils are cooled um, to about 107. Um, this is gonna be a little bit more complicated because I'm doing a drop inside the soap. And I'm also gonna do the peacock swirl on the top. Now it's really important for when you, whenever you do the peacock swirl, that you uh, that you have a, a very slow moving kind of more liquid, so that it, it acts kind of like a marbling type thing. So this particular fragrance, from what I remember, does accelerate the batch a little bit, and that's okay for the base part and for the drop. But for the top, I cannot fragrance it. So what I did was I took my um, my colors that I had dispersed and I split them between a squirt bottle and like um, and for the drop I'm gonna have my base be white so I have it in a separate thing. Um, I did the same thing with my other colors because I'm gonna swirl with all of these, but I don't want to fragrance those. Um, and then I'm gonna drop with that. And then I'm also gonna do a uh, well, and I also. I just have this reserved to the side because this is going to go in the main batch. So I'm, I'm less dishes. It's my motto. I 
Okay, I had this reserved. I know this looks kind of silly, but I had um, some of this copper mica um, dispersed in oil for a previous project, but I didn't want to waste it, so I saved it in a pipette, which uh, I blocked off with a toothpick. <laughs> I know, it's like all kinds of creativity around here, right? Um, for now, store this somewhere. I'm just going to let it sit in here off to the side. So I'm going to go ahead and pour in my lye. Let it pour down the side of my spatula here. this a little bit so um, I'll just go ahead and speed it up so you don't have to listen to it. Okay uh, I need it to remain pretty fluid for the peacock part uh, and it looks like it's getting to be about medium tray so I think I'm going to stop mixing it here and I'm going to go ahead and pour it into my bottles but I don't need a whole lot just enough to do a little bit of a peacock swirl. Okay. But since I'm doing the drop inside the base, I want the consistency of both to be about the same. So I'm going to fragrance um, the drop and the base. So you can see my fragrance oil here is already kind of turning like yellow so it's gonna definitely discolor. Um, maybe I will, it'll be alright. Go ahead and do this here. I like to stir it gently because you never know what these fragrances are going to do. And I could be completely wrong. It may not accelerate at all. It's been a while since I've used this fragrance. So, oh, sorry, I have been off screen there. That's my bad. Well, it looks like it's staying pretty good consistency, so I probably could have scented the peacock portion. But what's done is done. I never fragrance the peacock portion because I never know. And sometimes the weather may have an effect um, on your soap. So it's better to be safe than sorry. I'm going to go ahead and mix in my main color here. Yeah, I love this color. It's a very rich, purpley gray, kind of. And uh, when you, even though this is cold process, typically micas don't show up sparkly, but if you put enough in there, it will. And this one definitely is. So whenever the bar gets used, it's it's just sparkly and just really pretty. Okay. I'm gonna mix up these guys real quick. Mix up the white first. My little handy dandy frother that needs a new battery. I've been saying that for a while too. You can hear it. I'm like hitting the sides of the plastic with it. Got a little on my arm.
perfect. So I'm going to pour this, most of it in there anyway. But I need to reserve just a little bit so I can lay over, over the top of where I do my drop. Man, this fragrance smells so good. Okay. Very fluid. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and mix my swirl. good spin in there and drop it feels like it's gonna be another hip-hop drop it's all right I like the hip-hop drop it's just uh, I wanted a thinner drop but it's kind of hard to do that sometimes um, So right now I'm just since it's still so fluid. Boy, I was wrong about the traceability of this fragrance. Um, I had to let it pour down the side of my spatula so I didn't break my drop. I don't want to purposely drop it on the side here just to see what it'll do. It might pull the, the drop in the center towards the middle just a little bit more. It's the beauty of fluid dynamics. But it may not, it may not have gotten down far enough. That's out of the way. I'm just going to clean up my top just a tad. I'm really nitpicky about this sort of thing. I don't like getting soap batter everywhere. So I'm always kind of tidying up a little bit. Alright, so I'm just going to give these a good swirl. It's kind of hard to mix the color when it's in the, the mixing bottle, but should be good enough. Do you see it starting to get kind of get uniform? Looks pretty pretty uniform. Okay. Just as a forewarning, and I think I've mentioned this in one of my previous videos, titanium dioxide has a tendency to accelerate your soap batter. No matter what fragrance you're using, it's very slight, but your texture is gonna be a little different than the rest of your stuff. So, that being said, I'm going to layer this first. Uh, I think I want my... Gotta get the soap to the bottom. I think I want my stripes to go this way. Oh shoot. We may not have enough white because it's already kind of pooping out right here and I've <laughs> only done two lines. But then again, it could be because the batter is thicker and it's just kind of taking its time. So I'm going to go ahead and do the green so it, you could do this um, actually. Yeah, that's not what I meant to do you could do this um, 
messy like if you want or you can do it clean I consider this kind of a clean because I'm making the the lines very deliberate Get my copper up in here. Oh, looks like I didn't have as much copper either. Here, that art's just taking its time as well. But there's also beauty and simplicity, so. If I can't get that much copper down, maybe I'll just kind of try to, definitely not wasting this. Let me see if I can get some more white out. I don't want it to splatter too much because white is very contrasting against this batter and the splatter will be very visible. I apparently mixed up more of the turquoise than I did of anything else. color kind of came out. Man, I wish I could get more white in there. Oh, crud. Yep, we're done. So, oh no, I can fix that. And fix it. That's also the beauty of handmade. Nothing, no bar is going to be the same as evidenced by this. Okay, it's not as deliberate as I had hoped it would be, but that's okay. So this part is going to take a while. Um, I'm just doing the top. So basically, um, I'm not going to go very far in with my with my uh, chopstick, and I should probably hold this in my hand. I'm going to just comb down the soap like so. This is a uh, an old marbling technique. That looks very nice on soap. Oops, I don't want to go that far over. Um, you can make your lines tighter or wider as you wish. I like them to be a little bit tighter. Um, you can also get like a cheap wide tooth comb to do this all in one swoop. Um, I have wide tooth combs somewhere. I just don't know where they are, so I'm just using my Q-tip, or Q-tip, chopstick. I think the copper still looks pretty nice. It's just one line right there. Kind of gives it a little bit of an accent. Okay, and so now the peacock part comes uh, when you're doing kind of like a little like figure eight, not figure eight, I'm sorry, like kind of a half heart shape. So kind of start here and like make like half a heart shape, right? Okay, and then you want to kind of match it up with the other side so that it looks like kind of an hourglass. Okay. 
I can feel the soap getting harder, so I'm going to work a little faster. It's important to wipe your tip off before you put it back in the soap because then your colors, colors will start to look kind of muddy. Okay, I'm going to round this off here. Alright. Okay. So that is the peacock swirl, and I just did it on um, the surface of a regular loaf mold. This is a two pound loaf mold. Um, a lot of times people really want to showcase the peacock swirl on the surface of the soap, so they'll do like a flat mold where like the majority of the soap, like the face of the soap, um, like it's a slab so like you would pour and then do it all over the surface so that when you cut like the entire face of the bar is this peacock design the way I did it I'm gonna cut the bars like this I may well since I did the drop I'm not gonna do that but I'm gonna cut the bars like this and so just the top is gonna be this peacock swirl and I've never done that before so this is new for me but anyway I'm gonna let this sit in the oven and do its uh, oven thing and uh, I'll probably cut it tomorrow. Okay, so I didn't record my voice because I was listening to a book on tape, but here I am cutting the soap. It's a little soft. I um, probably should have waited a little bit, but that's okay. It um, uh, doesn't really uh, affect anything. It's just that thinner slice that uh, was affected. But uh, it didn't turn... I mean... The drop was not as big as I thought it would be, which is actually good because I wanted it to be smaller, um, probably even smaller than that, but that's still small. And I like how the um, the white and the teal kind of swirl around with each other in that soap. And um, since I zoomed in on the camera or on the shot here, you can't really see me pointing out the design on the camera, but um, you'll see a picture of it here soon. Uh, I apologize. I've been sick, so my uh, I have been neglecting videos <laughs> because I can't really. I was. I've been sounding really, really sinusy. But um, anyway, so yeah, I I kind of like how that bar looks right there. It's uh, got multiple little drops kind of swirling around there. But uh, yeah, so this is David's dance, and uh, it will be available on uh, my Etsy site and um, here it is in all its glory this is the top before I unmolded it um, this is after I unmolded it just another view of the top and um, anyway so yeah it, it'll be available on my Etsy site for purchase if you're interested it smells so good and uh, I again I just don't know how to describe the fragrance it's kind of like uh, I don't even know You'd have to smell it for yourself. I gave it a piece to my husband, and he smelled it, and he just goes, mm, -hmm, and he just didn't know <laughs> what to say about it. But um, anyway, so uh, that's it for this edition of Soap Making. If you're interested, just click my portrait on the right to subscribe, and if you are wanting to know when I post, just click on the bell. And uh, tune in next time for another Soap Making extravaganza. Bye!